Hey, welcome back to our battery build for our bus conversion. As you can see behind me here, I'm already working on the battery bank uh, as a pack, working on some compression, uh, how we're going to connect all the cells together, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm already thinking I need to make some changes here. So let me uh, take you through where we're at. Uh, the different components we've been using and what I think I'm going to be changing. And all along the way, feel free to uh, leave comments on, I don't know, what do you think is good? What do you think is bad? Uh, so I'm paying attention to those comments very closely. I think that's intently. I'm paying attention. Okay, so here's what we got going on here. Um... So let's start with the pack overall. We already made one change. As you can see, there are eight more batteries than last time. We were doing a 3P8S. Now we decided to go with a 4P8S. Uh, it does make it a little bit bigger, but it does simplify some things and give us more uh, run time, which is important because the wife said, uh, we would really like to not have to worry about power running the air all night, all that kind of stuff. So better to do it right the first time. So let's start uh, first things first here with uh, our outer casing here. We're doing a variation on the method that lithium solar has done and so many others. Uh, we got a board running across here. This is a three quarter inch thick uh, BCX ply from Menards. Then we've got threaded rod with a washer and here's what's really important here is I'm doing a vinyl to sleeve it to keep it protected uh, against the cells themselves. Uh, here's one piece of the rod that I haven't put in yet. Uh, on the back side of it here, I actually did a washer, or sorry, a nut, a washer, and a lock washer, and another nut to act as a good anchor, and then the uh, big old fat washer behind there and that just threads right through and then I put the vinyl on I've got one more to do over there that's where that one goes uh, one of the reasons why I did that as you can see back here we've got a little bit more space there I'm thinking back here because this is going to be the back of the battery bay uh, we'll have room to run wires and different things back there without it being tied up against the wall so the reason why we are even doing the threaded rods and compressing these is these cells last longer when they are when they are compressed. Uh, there's little pouches inside here, or that's what I believe is inside here, and they are going to expand and contract a little bit. These cells will actually expand and contract. Uh, I believe it's either f uh, full state of charge, they get a little fatter, and compressing them will give you almost an extra thousand cycles when you are using them. Now, that's going from 2,000 to 3,000. So, you know, it might not even be worth it. They may age out before they cycle out. I don't know. But I figure let's uh, not throw those extra cycles away. So we are doing compression. Now, with the compression, uh, you may see we're also adding a little insulation layer here because this blue plastic is not very thick at all. And what I'm using for that, you can see one of them sticking out here a little bit. I'm using uh, this material that I got here from Menards as well. This is like a, uh, I think something that someone might use in a bathroom or something. It's just a four by eight sheet of this uh, plastic that you can cut just with a utility knife. It's really easy to cut. I just cut out all the pieces I needed, stuck them in between, and then compressed them. And I did that before I took my measurements for my bus bars, which is probably what we should talk about next. Uh, don't pay attention to these copper bus bars here. Those are just kind of for layout and visualization purposes. Uh, we are going to do an all aluminum bus bar system. And for one reason is the, the studs that are in here, the terminals that are on these batteries, those are aluminum anyway. I don't really see a reason to not go with aluminum. You get the same metal. Uh, to me, it just makes sense. So the positives on aluminum, why am I using aluminum? Uh, well, like I said, it's the same 
metal that's already on the terminals themselves now. Uh, it's cheaper and much more readily available, and it's lighter. The downside is you have to use more aluminum versus copper because aluminum is about 30% less conductive. Now, take case in point here, this uh, copper bus bar actually should probably not even be sold with this kit. Uh, a friend of mine, JD, mentioned to me, hey, this bus bar is really only good for about 60 amps, I think. Uh, correct me, I'm on that. You can look it up. These batteries do 280. And in, you know, with a 250 amp BMS, what good does this do you? This thing's going to get hot. And I see a lot of people building with these. So you need something beefier than these anyway. Now, for 100 amp BMS or, you know, if you know you're not going to be going over what those are rated for, you're probably fine. It's probably not a big deal. But we are. I'm planning... I don't think we're going to be using much more than 120 to maybe spikes of 200 amps, probably staying pretty safe there. But um, the more I got to thinking about this and what I was trying to do, I was trying to get away with quarter inch bus bars here on my ends and eighth inch bus bar for connecting the cells together and quarter inch bus bar is also good for 60 amps but I figured at 120 amps if I tapped from the middle that would be 30 30 so that's 60 amps going through there so that would be fine and then I'd run a quarter inch piece across here but the more and more I got to think about it that is just it's on the razor's edge and I don't want to be building heat in here so, what did I do? Went out to the store, or to the uh, material supplies place, and I got 3 8 inch uh, aluminum bar stock. And they only sold it in 12 feet sections. So you can see that is pretty long. So we can cut it up right up on the table saw. That's real nice. Uh, here's quarter, or yeah, this is quarter inch for comparison. And this is eighth inch for comparison. So uh, I bought enough material. I think I'm going to do all of it in this, which means I'm not going to be able to use these studs anymore. The hardware that came with it. I was already starting to replace some of it with other hardware. Uh, I've been getting the, these from Lowe's, pretty much cleaning them out. I cleaned out two locations. I sh could have ordered from Amazon. I just uh, was kind of prototyping on the fly and was impatient. So let me take you around uh, how this is actually all going to flow. Uh, each of these groups where you see two bars together, those think of those as one battery. So these four cells are all paralleled together. And then they're going to jump her over to these four, which are all paralleled together. And then this complete bar here acts as the jumper to go to this next group of four, and these are all parallel together. And over here, likewise, and it just keeps going around. And then I end up with my two positive and negative terminals right here. So that's the plan, I guess. That's what I'm thinking. The other thing you noticed, uh, I label all these A, A1234, B1234, and so on, so that I can track individual cells. If I have a problem with the one, I know which exact one it is. Now, with the BMS, because I'm only going to have balance leads to each group, I'm not going to know which grouping, or I'm not going to know which specific cell is having a problem if there is one. But at least while I'm working with a specific cell grouping, I will know which one it belongs to if I ever pull them out or whatever. I don't know. It just seems like it makes sense to do that. So I did that. Uh, as far as where the actual BMS is going to go, I'm not even sure yet. I would like to probably put it back here somewhere. Uh, maybe I'll even add some more spacers and put it back there. One of my next steps is actually once I finish getting all the wire cut uh, to length for this or actually extending all my balance lead wires, I will actually transfer it over into the bus and then we can get to work on that. So that should be pretty fun and exciting. Okay, so we've got some big beefy bus bars on here. And you can probably tell we've also got some balance leads on here. 
Um, really happy with these bus bars. Had to get some longer um, bolts for these ones, obviously. Again, these are 3 8 inch thick. Uh, I think they should handle almost 200 amps. I think we'll be plenty good with this. Uh, I wasn't super thrilled with having to put this connection here, this cross connection, um, in imbalance basically. So we have one battery here and then two batteries on this side. So it will naturally, uh, under high load, become a little imbalanced, but I'm gonna watch it. If it's a problem, I can add another one right here and double it up. Uh, and I would do that on all of them. Uh, what else here? Um, oh, so we are uh, in the process of, I'm just playing around with the BMS. We've got some power going into it. The BMS is on. We got the uh, Bluetooth going and connected here. Uh, I'm recording on my phone, so I can't really show you that screen, but let me give you a couple of tips on this. Um, when connecting to Bluetooth, you have to enable the Bluetooth. It does not show up in your normal Bluetooth devices. You have to go into the app, and I use the Smart BMS app to connect to it, and then it finally connected. Uh, and then you're going to want to make sure you go in there and set some of the settings because initially it only has uh, the voltages at, I think, the like, top cutoff voltage is 3.7 which is higher than I want to run I set these to 3.6 3.65 I know is top uh, but I'm gonna stick with uh, 3.6 I hear that's just fine or even 3.5 can be fine um, and the other thing is when you make the changes you uh, it asks for a password in my case the password was one two three four five six I'd look that up online but be aware of that so hopefully that'll save some problems or some troubles that you might have if you're doing this. Uh, oh, here's the other cool thing that I kind of half discovered. I had some of this, this just cable wrap here. And I saw on some EV battery packs that they wrap some things in this sort of stuff. And I was just playing around with it. And sure enough... It will fit right on here. Well, I can almost slide it on, right? So I'm thinking about actually coating all of my bus bars with this thing to keep it safe. And because the, all these conductors here, there's so many amps. There's over, I mean, there's over 1,100 1, amps between this. 1,100 amps between all of them. It really freaks me out how much energy is here and how quickly it would dissipate. I mean, uh, you put a wrench across here, it would just start on fire or it would melt, which is one reason why rubber handled wrenches are good. I think we're good. I think my next step is to put it in the bus. So yeah, I think uh, next step is put it in the bus and we can use a real charger, not this uh, little dinky charger there that only does 10 amps. We can put uh, 100, 150 amps into it and actually get it up charged, uh, finish the top balance there. I think that'll about do it for this episode. If you have any comments or questions, leave those down below. Uh, if you see me doing anything that's wrong, let me know. Uh, I'm just doing this the best way I know how. Uh, this is the first battery pack like this I've built, so uh, I could use all the help I can get. But I don't have anything further. Go ahead and enjoy Labor Day weekend. Uh, we are going to be going out somewhere. Should be fun. Stay tuned.